Hi guys, welcome to this particular series on note reading. This will be a tutorial series on note reading, beginning today with four basic steps, four beginning steps. These steps will be, one, uh, the general concept of the stave, how it works, um, two, how to find the notes on your instrument, three, how to find the notes on the stave, the um, rhymes if you will, for some beginning note lengths to, to look at. Um, one beat, two, three, four. Uh, so be patient with yourself. Have a go at trying to read some of these notes onto your instrument. Um, we're not trying to sound too wonderful at the moment. We're just trying to get a process going so as we create a reading habit. Today, we're going to get into the beginning concepts of note reading. Just four of them just to get you started and I intend to get you enthusiastic about the idea of finding notes on the music and being able to play them on your instrument there'll be a little bit of timing but it's important to note that this is just a scratching the surface of a very interesting subject with the whole reading of scores what we're going to deal with is the four basic concepts to start with you will see up there on the screen a stave the stave will have five lines and four spaces. Now, at the moment, it is just a place for you to put your instructions, but it's not too much use to us because we don't have any starting points of the pitch. You can't tell what your first note is. So, but the general concept of your stave is as you go up it, you get higher in pitch. And as you travel along it, you're moving along the time and the piece. So we need some instructions that give us the pitch and the length of the note, whether it's a long note or a whole lot of short ones, that sort of thing. First we need is a starting point. Now you'll see some squiggly lines, or not squiggly lines, sorry. You will see some little squiggles at the front, uh, squiggly type of patterns. They're called clefts. Now the first one, uh, the treble clef, sort of looks like a circle, kind of, and it was actually designed to tell everybody where the G above middle C is on their stave. So that second line there gives you your starting note, gives you a G. Now, Understandably, it used to be called the G clef, but it gives you a starting point for your right hand for your treble clef. So that gives you the G above middle C. Now, the next clef I'm showing you, uh, the one that looks a little bit like a backward ear, uh, is the F clef or bass clef. Used to be called F clef because it's telling you about where the F is. It's telling you about the F below middle C. So those two dots, they're either side of the F. So this gives us our starting points for our clefts. Now, as pianists, we use two clefts. We use one for each hand, kind of. That changes a little bit. Treble and bass. The treble is pretty much above middle C. The bass clef is pretty much below middle C. Now, the basic concept is, as you go up the stave, you go up the piano or up and pitch. As you go down the stave, you go down and pitch. We're going to learn these notes between there, how to find them. But in general, going up, you go up, going down, you're going down, and going left to right along the stave is the movement in time. Okay, now that we've kind of got our starting points, we actually need to be able to find out the, where the notes are on the instrument. Now there is, is useful ways of doing that using what I sometimes call the signposts or we sometimes call the signposts is the black notes. The black notes have lots of functions but at the moment we're going to use them for this. They also do sharps and flats. We are going to use the groupings of the twos and threes to help us find our way around. So here's your group of three Here's your group of two. Here's your group of two. 
here's your group of three. These are our signposts. These are gonna help us find our way around on the piano. Now we have a thing called a musical alphabet, which goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it just keeps repeating and it's only seven letters long, which is a great thing, really. It's um, at least makes one part of music a little bit more simple that, that we only have seven letters in our alphabet. The timing is what makes it tricky. Now, as I'm going through this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, you might have noticed that the Ds or every note keeps appearing in the same place according to where the black notes are. So that is how we're gonna find our way around. That is why I call them the signposts. If you look at the group of two, D, is always in the middle of them. So this is a D, this is a D, this is a D. And you can hear those notes the same, you know, they're pitched a bit lower and that sort of stuff, but they still sound an octave apart, the D. So the D is in the group of two, right in the middle. Now in the middle of the group of three, it's quite useful to remember that this is where the musical alphabet ends with the G and starts again with the A. So the end and the beginning is right in the middle of the group of three. So we'll go through the A's first. A, starting there, just slightly to the right, but you know, still in the middle of the group of three. We have the A, so A, A, that's out of shot, not to worry. A, come down, there's a B. A. a, you can hear they're all sound the same. And this is a good thing for you to do, is to go on your instrument and just find all the A's and get used to being able to see them quickly and easily using that group of three. Okay, now the end of course is G's, ever so slightly to the left in the middle of the group of three, right? So we have G, G. Right. And do this, go around your instrument. Explore your instrument thinking the notes and that is going to really help you. Okay, now we've got the middles covered, we'll go back to the group of two and to the left of the group of two is C and most of you probably recognise that as middle C, it's kind of one of the first ones we learn isn't it? But the C is always to the left of the group of three, so C, 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 etc. Okay, to the right of the group of two, which I'm quite sure you're starting to get all this now, is the E's. So we've got the E, E, to the right of the group of two. Now we've only got two left, and it's to the left and the right of the group of three. So we'll go left, F's. Now this sometimes gets students because they think they're playing to the left of the group of two and they'll be playing an F. Just check out the size of your group. But F is to the left of the group of three. And B's are to the right of the group of three. Out of shot, sorry. Okay, do that on your instrument. You can get somebody to just read a book and call out random letters to you. You can pull out random letters. It doesn't matter, just get used to finding those notes on the keyboard. That will really help you. Now that we have the notes on the instrument, we know where we can find them, because it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We've got the musical alphabet in our mind. We now want to be able to find them on the stave easily. Now we talked about the, the clefs. So we know that we can find G being the second line and we can find F being the second top line of the bass clef. Okay, the rhymes. The rhymes are what tell us where the notes are on the stave. I know they're traditional and they're sometimes considered old fashioned, but they work, so we're gonna use them. So, you'll notice that the staves had four spaces and five lines. So we make up a rhyme for each of those and it helps us find the notes. So we're talking about the treble clef, 
which is above middle C. And the spaces are F A C E, which actually spells the word face. So he moves up the stave, first space, second space, third space, top space, or fourth, F A C E. No need for a rhyme. We move on to the lines of the treble clef. And we make up the rhyme, the first letter, of course, being the note name. So it's every good boy deserves fruit. And that works up all the lines. E, G, B, D, F. Now you can make up your own rhymes if you like. Some of my students have made up funny ones to help them remember it and that sort of stuff. Uh, all up to you. They're very simple. And if you just remember them and use them frequently, eventually you'll know those letters. E, G, B, D, F. Now let's move on to the bass clef. Remember, bass clef is below middle C. And our F is that second to top line. Let's go down to the bottom space. A, C, E, G, or all cows eat grass. Of course, you can make up all sorts of things. Lines is George Bush draws funny animals. Now, of course, all the lines, there's a five. So if you have trouble remembering which rhyme is which, um, if it's five, it's definitely lines. George Bush draws funny animals. G, B, D, F, A. See that F there? That's the F that is in the middle of the two dots of the bass clef. So all these things link into each other to help us read. Now, we've actually got all the notes now from here to here, I think, yes. But we're missing three in the middle. Now, most of you would have known middle C probably before you even clicked on this video. But if you didn't, this is middle C. And things that you may not know about middle C is it's often written in a couple of places. It's written on a line above the bass clef and on a line below the treble clef and it is the same note. Some notes can be written in different places. We don't need to go too much there, but C, you will often see that. And there are two other notes to deal with. The B, which sits neatly on top of the bass clef, and the D, which sits neatly under the treble clef. So we've got three notes in the middle. Now you might think, well, there's a big gap there. You could fit more notes in there. Yes, you can, but there is actually only three notes between the two staves. B, C, D, sometimes referred to as big chocolate donuts. Always works for remembering things. Okay, now our last concept, well, concept, our last beginning step in reading is trying to get some note lengths. As we talked about before, as you travel along the stave, you are moving through the time of the piece. So we need different note shapes or different notes to depict different time. So we're gonna deal with one beat notes, two beat notes, one, two, one, two, one, two, three beat notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and four beat notes, one, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna get those sorted out in our minds. First, we're gonna do the crotchet, which is the one beat note, and also explain to you that there are two different ways of naming these notes. They're not different at all, just two different names. You can call it a crotchet, or you can call it a quarter note. Both systems have merit, so we're gonna use both along the way, and I'll tell you both names. Now, the one beat note is a crotchet, and it's a quarter note. Here's an example of how that would work. Okay, up on the screen, we're just traveling through in crotchets. One, 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 two, three, four. And there, that last note is the whole note, which we'll explain in a minute, but it lasts for four beats. Okay, the next note we want to pick up is the minimum. It's not colored in in the middle, and it lasts for two beats. So when you play stuff with that, it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, 
Longer notes, and of course, holding your longer notes makes the makes the music better. So, <laughs> do do hold notes for their full length if you can help it. Okay, the next one we want to deal with is a three beat note. We're not going to explain too much the dot. That can be another video, but just know that the dotted minimum or the dotted half note lasts for three beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Four. That example there is using some dotted half notes. One, two, threes. And some crotchets. One. And the combination make that little line there you can see that it makes quite a difference to how long you hold a note now of course the last note that we need to deal with is the four beat note which is the whole note the semi brief all meaning four beats so it's one two three four one two three four now you would have seen that i used those at the end of both the crotchet the um minimum and the three beat or dotted minimum example um, just to show you what a four beat is like one two three four and i used it to complete the lines each one of those bars added up to four that is actually probably the topic of another video but we aim at four because that's probably our more common time signature okay so crotchets half notes two beats dotted half notes three beats and whole notes four beats learn all that lot and see if you can start finding notes and playing them on your instrument get used to it don't worry about sounding flash or anything like that just start using this as a tool to help you with your musicality bye for now i hope i've got you interested in note reading now there's such a, a wealth of of art and, and music available and being able to read and all this information now is is on the net or in your libraries um, or even under my music still it's a great thing to do please subscribe ask me questions down below you can guide me as to which subjects you would like to be discussed next thank you